We're ready to thread the serger. Now take a look, right back here, there's gonna be a little guide. It's the first guide that you're gonna catch. And you're gonna be bringing the thread down and kind of underneath to catch it. Now if you miss it, you can always go back and kind of push it in and make sure it clicks all the way. Now when we thread, we're gonna thread kind of from the inside out. First the loopers, then the needles. This is key, that you start with the upper looper first. And even the picture down here is numbered. Blue is number one, that's the upper looper. Red is number two, that's the lower looper. And the way I remember it, if you think of blue, heaven, and a sky, that's up, upper looper, and red, well, you know the rest. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our thread, we're going up and over the back side of our thread stand. And I love that all these guides are nice and open. Hold your thread nice and tight and kind of scoop that down and underneath. Now, if you don't catch it, go ahead and just do it again. It should hook in there nice. Now, as I get down here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see, and then I'm gonna use tweezers, which will become your best friend for threading all these guides down below. With the tweezers, they become the extension of your fingers. You're just gonna follow the color-coded paths. So just take your fingers and bring this through and around. You're gonna kinda come underneath this small red part. Now just make sure a lot of times this gets caught over here around this little screw. <laughs> just make sure that it doesn't. Notice that the thread goes all the way through. Now when you look at your picture, you're gonna notice which way this is supposed to go. I go from the back and it twirls kinda towards me. And once again, this is the upper looper. So we're coming up, there's one more guide as we come this way. Now we're ready to thread through the upper looper. Now this knife can actually be removed, so I'm gonna just push it firmly in and then twist up. And that will help give us a little bit more room for our fingers and our tweezers. What's nice is this knife is not, um, it's sharp, but it's not gonna cut you if you put your fingers up against it. So I'm gonna just take, let me show you how I put my thread in the tweezers. I actually put it so it's right as a little bit of an extension. So if you lay your thread down and then take a, a, your tweezers, so instead of just going like this and have to go sideways, go with it so you're pushing it through. Make sure you kind of get a good, not much more than a quarter inch away from it. Here's the upper looper. Notice how big that eye is. And then when you pull this through, just make sure it doesn't get caught on any other item. And you can follow that path right on through without any extra detours going on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the same thread for our lower looper. This one's the one that some people have a little bit trouble through. I'm catching that guy right on the back side of the machine. I also have the presser foot up when I'm threading. That makes, means the tension discs are open. And it's really easy to pull this through. If the presser foot is down, you need to really make sure you get it in the tension disc, otherwise you're gonna have issues later. Just go ahead and give that a little whirl through that part. And then there's one more guide right here that you'll be able to see. So I'm just lifting it up and through there. Now is where you need to open up this side door. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow you to see what's going on. As we come around here, you're gonna notice there is a black bar. Now you will need to make sure that the thread comes above that black bar. That's what this little tool is, like a little shepherd staff. I'm gonna put it above the black bar and hook it and it's gonna bring it back to this direction. Once it's over here, take and turn your hand wheel so you can see the lower looper elbow coming back. And you're gonna take your thread and bring it behind that elbow. There's a little groove, you're just gonna lay it in there. Now I'm gonna move the serger and I'm gonna use the same tool, but this time from the other side to bring it back. Once again, just make sure you're back above the el that little black bar. Bring it all the way back. I got a lot of thread, so I'm gonna just go ahead and cut down to what I need. And then we're gonna turn our hand wheel and bring our upper looper. Here's where I like to set it so they actually are kind of like two little cross swords. The lower looper is in front of the upper looper. So if I level them out like this, when I use my tweezers to push that thread right on through, it goes over the upper looper. Now that's not as crucial because once you take the first stitch, it actually is going to get where it needs to go. Notice here I have hooked over underneath this little part, so I'm gonna just make sure I pull that out. Another thing that I like to point out to my students is 
on that lower looper, there is a groove running from kind of its back elbow that you saw we, we threaded. That wasn't hard at all. And to the eye, that groove is where the thread sits. So if it is properly threaded, it, that thread will lay in that groove. Now, let's go ahead and do our needles. Not as important in the order that you're doing your needles, so I'll just kind of take my next one in order, which happens to be the right needle. Make sure my little guide is cut. Kind of go down and to the left. Oh, a little bit more, there we go. And now we're bringing it across. I'm gonna lower this knife back into position, so it's just gonna click into place. So just let it fall and click. Now you're gonna take this red underneath over and go in the green slot. This guide will be shared by both needle threads. And since this is the right one, we're gonna go ahead and use the top uh, guide and just kind of through the little twirl there. And then once again, I love using the tweezers. This time getting a little closer, hold on that thread and poking it right on through. There are some nice little handheld needle threaders that you can purchase that will help push those, the thread through if you're having trouble seeing. And then we're gonna repeat for the exact same thing for the other needle. Now while I'm doing this, do you notice that the needles are at two different heights? The left one is taller than the right one. And then, all right, here we go. So anytime that you change threads around, you do need to make sure that those needles are never even. That should be clue number one. If they are even, something, one of the needles is not high enough up into the um, holder there. All right, let me go ahead and get this last needle threaded. And now we have four individual threads that need to get caught up into their little chain. Notice the, the needle threads, I'm just laying out over here to the side. Some people try to stick them to the back. It really doesn't matter. Once you take those first couple stitches, they're gonna get all pulled together. Now here's a little trick I do. The fabric, I fold in half. You always wanna sew on two layers if that's what you're gonna be using it for. But I fold it in half, but surge on the folded side. So once we're done, we can open it up and peek at it. If you sew over here, well then, well you can't, well, you can't open it. All right, so we're going to take our fabric. If you want, you can lift up your presser foot, slide the fabric all the way in so the very first stitch of the needles and loopers go into fabric versus air. Sometimes that's a little reassuring when you're getting started here. Sometimes I'll even just kind of gently hold on to these threads so they just get that first stitch right where they need to go. Yes, these threads will kind of want to pull. Sometimes what I'll do is cut them so they're not kind of going all the way through the foot until they clear themselves out. Now when you're done, just go ahead and keep surging off the edge of the fabric and then bring the fabric around and go ahead and use the knife as the cutter. So this is what we're looking for. Let me look at the back. Oh, I'll show you something. All right, so here we have our two needle threads. We have our yellow and green. They're going on top. They look like sewing machine stitches. And then our looper, Upper looper is blue, and then our lower looper is red, so that's on the back side. See this little extra loop, see those loops? One of my needle threads did not get all the way into the tension. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look right down here, and sure enough, I can see that that thread is just kinda hanging on the outside there. I'm gonna get, lift up my presser foot and make sure that that thread gets seated all the way down into the tensions. And then that way I will have the perfect stitch. And I'll run that right on through and we'll get that all fixed. And now we're ready to start exploring the different uses of a serger.